Time Warp TV. It's the first time I have you here in my little studio. Um, tonight you'll play at the Love Club in Ludwigshafen and you played the first time on Time Warp this year as well. So what do you prefer, the, the small, cozy, clubby thing with high energy or do you prefer the big, the big stage? I actually love both for different reasons. Obviously the smaller clubs uh, give you a chance to be in more of an intimate environment and so you can be you know, kind of like one with the people and literally have one foot on the dance floor and one foot in the DJ booth. But I was amazed when I did Time Warp uh, that for such a huge room and such a vast you know, uh, amount of people there, it actually felt like a, an intimate club. And that was what I took away from the experience. For me, I felt just as at ease uh, playing at such a big room, at such a big event. Uh, as I do in a 300 capacity club and for me that's what I you know, cherish the most out of that experience. So for most of the Time Warp fans your set was one of the highlights of the night and hearing that now it seems that you also enjoyed it very much and you so you felt this special Time Warp atmosphere everybody's talking about? Definitely you know it was for me it was uh, I think one of the best if not the best the large-scale event that I've ever played in my career. Um, It, and, and also to have all of the people um, whose music I respect and, and the DJs whose music I respected uh, and people that I've been friends with for so many years, to have everybody there was also a magical experience. You know, it, it was like we were not only sharing the experience with all the people, especially the Italians who, who drove, you know. We have a, sorry to interrupt, we have a very huge crowd coming from Italy. Big up to Italy here. Big up to Italy, yeah. Uh, you know, and I had a lot of Italian friends that, that you know, it took them 12 hours or something to get there but um, I think you know it goes to show you how committed people are to um, embracing that kind of an event that they go to such great lengths to, to, to be there so for me experiencing that with the crowd and also with you know the, the, the colleagues in, in this industry that I look up to uh, and that I'm friends with for me it was an, an overall uh, it, quite emotional experience actually <laughs> Are there any other huge things coming up in 2011 you're looking forward to? Like uh, an album maybe, an Fire album or something on more on the private scale or any other festival? I'm actually, um, t tonight is at Loft Club. Uh, it's a very special night because it's my last European gig before the end of the year or until the end of the year. And I'm taking the next two weeks off to kind of um, create a roadmap of things that I want to achieve next year. I know for a fact that uh, I spent very little time in the studio this year. Um, some projects I've worked on haven't been released yet. Uh, but, um, you know, I feel like I, I took on too many gigs this year. So I think one of my big goals for next year is the first half of next year, actually, is to, to, to be more in the studio. You know? and work on more remixes and productions. A lot of people are asking me, you know, when I have the next remix or production coming out, and I don't have an answer for anybody right now, but I know that that, that has to be a priority. So are there any names you can already drop here, or is it still a secret? Or is it just that you don't know? I did a, um, I did a remix that I'm really proud of, another one for, for Plastic Man, for Richie Houghton, um, and, you know, it's up to him uh, and, and the overall project when, when that's going to be released. But um, it's something that I've been playing in my sets and, and something that uh, is a departure, a slight departure from my normal sound. Um, it's both reverent, but at the same time futuristic, and I'm really proud of that. And uh, also, um, I, I probably will do more work with Underworld. We did um, a collaboration on two songs for their new album, and uh, we enjoyed the working relationship. There's going to be more stuff with uh, Oliver Huntman that I'm working on. And um, I don't know, I'm just trying to, you know, it's always um, trying to, 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 you know, be better than your last record, you know, to, to challenge yourself and see um, which... It's, it's always a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge, yeah, and it's, it's like an internal battle that I have with myself. <laughs> Coming to the end, I want to give you one of the most famous questions. 
<laughs> Imagine you'll be on a um, deserted island somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And um, well, the standard question would be what five things you would like to bring. But as you said, you, you, you read, you, you like to read on when you travel. So what, what would be the most important books or your favorite books you would like to bring to this island? Uh, books, that's a hard one. Um, it, it probably won't be books. It'll probably be, you know, uh, my dad uh, writes poetry, and uh, we're in the process of trying to get his poetry translated from from Farsi to English. So once we do that, I'll probably take two of his books, uh, and the rest would probably be music. You know, music that um, formed uh, throughout my my career, and also throughout my um, uh, history in, in appreciating music. It'll just form the foundations of. Uh, what makes me tick today. So maybe an ambient album by Global Communication, or a ministry album, Neubauten album, you know, things like that. So it would probably be music. So, um, Ali, thank you very much for uh, sharing these thoughts here with us for Time Warp TV. And are there any last things you would like to give out to the people? Uh, thanks for the support and um, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you on the dance floor at an after party <laughs> in the very near future. Somewhere on this global. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye.